before we begin, thank you very much to Common CJ for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Thank you guys so much for your support for here over on Patreon, wherever the support is. You guys are genuinely what's keeping me doing this because if this wasn't working the way it's working right now, I'd have to can the entire channel and go work shifts at Target. So thank you. Thank you for allowing me to continue living the dream and bringing more and more videos for you guys to watch. Today's topic might be a little bit morbid, but also a little bit ridiculous, because we are talking about Optimus Prime and death, with two topics that uh, uh, are, are interesting bedfellows. Uh, it's a running joke at this point that there is no way to truly kill Optimus Prime. He's always going to come back in one way or another. There is just no keeping a good Prime down. However, when I first concepted this list, I thought, let's go through all like the weirdest deaths or let's go through all you know, and include like little every Optimus, Primal, R.I.D. Well, actually, R.I.D. was fine. Uh, but yeah, let's just go through every iteration of Prime and just pull 10 examples from that. But the more I researched and the more I looked this over, the more I realized I don't even have to leave G1 for this list. I can do it with, I can really do it with only two continuities, the, car, the G1 cartoon and the G1 comic book, and then we'll need a few splinters and divergent paths uh, for that to actually get to 10. But even then, even then, there are iterations of G1 or connected G1 stories that also include prime deaths. So what we're about to do right now is use as few sources as possible to get to 10 and then realize... I had leftovers. <laughs> I have leftovers. But for now, let us talk about 10 times that G1 Prime died. And we're going to begin with the most obvious one, the original one, the 1986 movie, where he dies after a valiant effort, uh, landing at Aut Autobot City when the Decepticons were winning the battle, turning the tide of the fight, one-on-one -on -one with Megatron one last time, and taking a fatal blow that may or may not have been Hot Rod's fault. But ultimately, yes, he succumbed to injuries and, of course, famously turned gray on the operating table. Um, yeah, so this is the classic Prime death. Of course, everyone remembers it. People cried at it. So many people cried at it that they had to go and redub the G.I. Joe movie to say... Uh, when Duke dies in the movie, someone off screen has to go, Duke's fallen into a coma! And then at the end of the movie, where everyone's cheering the victory for the day, someone again, off screen, Duke's come out of his coma! It's the most hilarious patch job I've ever seen, <laughs> and it's all because Optimus Prime's death was so poorly received. And that brought us to a lot of other instances we're going to cover. The next time we would see Optimus Prime, he would be in far, far worse condition. Broken and shambling, Optimus Prime reappears in the episode Dark Awakening, brought back to life mostly by the Quintessons in an effort to trick the Autobots into giving up the Matrix and lead them to their destruction. Uh, Optimus, through force of will and a little bit of Matrix influence, actually did manage to overcome that Quintesson programming and sacrifice himself to save his Autobots, uh, once again dying in the process. This time, uh, very, very heavily damaged, like way worse damage, like Prime just like, like, like super decayed after he, after he, like, you don't think a robot, a metal robot should decay that much. Uh, in what was essentially one year, but, oh man, he was in terrible shape, and then magically got better. <laughs> when he, when we went to, uh, when we went to his, the return of Optimus Prime, and we saw his corpse again, not only was it fully colored and not gray anymore, but all the damage from Dark Awakening was gone. <laughs> Weird little continuity gaffe, but hey, it brought back Optimus Prime, that's really all that anyone really wanted. But again, that's two deaths that did not stick. Shall we go for another? Now here is an obscure one that is a patch job of the highest order. For this, we have to remember that in Japan, they did not get the 86 movie until I believe 1989. 
long after season two and three happened. So when they did Headmasters, they did a bit of a flashback to explain why Optimus Prime had passed away at some point and Rodimus took over and to kind of explain away that whole season two, three gap thing that happened. Uh, and their, their answer was Optimus Prime fell in battle. Okay, simple enough, except it's not a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Megatron. It's just a random battle in front of the Ark, the Autobot HQ, with a bunch of other Autobots who don't react at all to Prime taking a random shot from some off-screen Decepticon and immediately turning gray. It just looks like he just got he just took a lucky blast that just hit him perfectly and just finished him off, even though we've seen Prime take a hundred shots that look just as potent. It was a slap job. It was a slap dash patch job. It was just no. It is the most lackluster way of explaining it possible. Japan actually had a lot of problems explaining it. That's the whole reason Convoy no Nazo for the Famicom existed. It was supposed to tell the story of what happened to Prime. Uh, he died. <laughs> uh, but don't worry, it doesn't last very long. Let's stick with Headmasters, and we're going to go to another death. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is going to keep happening. Of course it is, because that's what Prime does. This one was actually supposed to be like a, like, this is it. This really is Optimus Prime's death. So, in, this, in the story of the Headmasters, it takes place after uh, Prime used up the wisdom inside the Matrix to beat the Hate Plague. So, the Matrix is just completely empty. Uh, in the course of these episodes, uh, Alpha Trion sacrifices himself. He leaves Vector Sigma and uses his own essence to enter the Matrix and repower it, which in turn turns Hot Rod back into Rodimus Prime. So it was like, the episode is the birth of Double Convoy, which is, so is the first time you get to see Rodimus Prime and Optimus Prime fighting together. So at the end of the episode... Vector Sigma is destabilized, and Optimus, being the one he do, being who he is, sacrifices himself. Doesn't this sound familiar at this point? In order to stabilize Vector Sigma, and promptly passes away again. So he stops Cybertron from blowing up, and then a few episodes later, Cybertron blew up. Um, I'm glad that sacrifice uh, meant something, Prime. Yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of a bittersweet note there. Before you see what it is, I'm sorry. I am so so sorry, but I have to include it on this list because we're sticking to G1, and this is, this has happened too in the G1 continuity. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got to I've got to bring up Kiss players. I don't want to. You don't want me to, but we're going to because I don't really have any other option. Also, the photo on the screen is the only shot on the box that wouldn't get this video demonetized in any way. So, if you don't know the story of Kiss players, good. But to give you just a little bit of like the idea is like when these girls kiss the Autobots they're paired with it changes their shape and powers them up, which is their excuse for going from G1 design to alternator slash Tech design. Uh, I don't have a visual example of exactly when Prime died because it happened in a radio drama that was kind of the supplementary story elements to this entire series. For that episode, for the I believe the final episode here, the explanation was that these girls were empowered by Galvatron cells, and the KISS actually imparts the same cells that Unicron used to reformat uh, Megatron into Galvatron, hence the powering up and the shape changing. Weird explanation, but that's Japanese fiction for you. And, and, but to be fair, it's using a clever element. Uh, it's the one compliment I'll give KISS players, trust me. Galvatron became an enemy at the end, uh, he was ejected into space, and when he left, the cells went with him. So the whole Kiss player thing, they lost their powers, which means uh, Rodim you know, uh, Rodimus, or Hot Rod, went back to normal G1 Hot Rod, and Optimus died again, because the cells that were keeping him alive were suddenly gone. Uh, I'll leave it there. 
not talking KISS players again for a long time. For the most recent one on the list, and might be one that you actually missed, because this was in the Legends comics that were packed in with uh, the Takara releases of the last, you know, several years. Um, these, these, these are bizarre. These are bizarre comics uh, that work in a lot of the current toys. They work in a lot of weird, obscure characters from throughout fiction. It's an interesting thing to look at. But one of the thing elements of it was uh, Ratchet and Vector Sigma ended up uh, creating a a uh, restoration device that actually brought Optimus Prime back to life, but Vector Sigma only had enough power to give him about seven days worth of life. Long enough to fight a good fight and sell some extra toys before uh, promptly dying again. The reasoning for it being uh, Prime had died so many times at this point that that's all that Vector Sigma could give him. Uh... It's literally canonical in G1 canon somewhere in Japan now that Prime has died and come back to life so many times that it basically just takes a lot to bring him back for good at this point. Uh, and the, the thing about this is in Kiss Players and the Legends comics both pretty much had to go by the exact same thing. There are G1 stories that came after Zone, the final animated G1 story, and after Battle Stars and Return of Convoy, the last G1 fiction. All of that had to still include the fact that Prime doesn't get revived until we get to Return of Convoy and the Zodiac energy becomes a thing. So every story has to end with Prime dying again. That's basically why this one is such a mess. But there you go. That was the last time Prime died in the canonical G1 continuity in Japan before he was finally resurrected in Battle Stars. Now we go over to the comic book side of things, and this is probably the weirdest one on the list. So when Optimus Prime first died in the G1 comic book, it was because him and Megatron were playing a video game. Yes, uh, this was actually a thing that happened. They competed in a video game, where the loser was going to get blown up. So, uh, in reality, Optimus Prime won the game. However, in order to win the game, he had to violate his own principles, so he voluntarily uh, forfeited and accepted the loss because apparently he couldn't live with what he had done, even though they were, it was a video game and it was to digital people that don't really exist. <sighs> and that, that's how G1 Prime dies in the Marvel comic books for the first time. Oh, but don't worry, they saved a backup of his mind so they could bring him back later on. In fact, they put it on one of these. One of these 5-inch floppy disks with a whole 500 kilobytes of data. You have any idea? Did you realize that a Transformer Spark fits on half a megabyte? Because apparently it does. And I think, actually, I think this is even a newer one. I don't even think it was that big back then. Uh, yeah, so... Dumb. Incredibly dumb. To the Marvel Comics credit, the second time actually went a lot more sensibly. Uh, Optimus Prime dies in the comic books again after hurling himself into Unicron with the Matrix in order to blow him up from the inside. Now that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Um... The Rodimus, I believe the Rodimus they had in the comic books was due to time travel shenanigans. So when Unicron attacks in the comic book, uh, it's up to Optimus, not Rodimus, to activate the Matrix. And unlike Rodimus, he doesn't really make it out. Uh, what's left of him lands on Cybertron in an ugly scrap heap. Um, and then just, you know, promptly goes out again. This time, uh, because it was his power master body... He was bonded to uh, his engine HiQ at the time, his Nebulon partner. However, because of their connection and because Prime dies in this instance, HiQ starts believing himself to be Optimus Prime because technically, because the two had merged together, he was now. So basically, once again, Prime's mind got copied. So fortunately, uh, fortunately a Nebulon has 500 kilobytes spare in their brain. Uh, so he could take on Optimus Prime for a while, so, and eventually, 
Q was transformed into a brand new Optimus Prime. Uh, thank you to the last Autobot for uh, providing that right at the tail end of the comic. We're close to the end, so how about one more self-sacrifice for the road? Now, this one is in the Generation 2 comic book, but we're continuing the G1 story from the Marvel issues, so it's still technically the same canon. In this instance, the Swarm, having recently, uh, recently dined on Earth and a whole bunch of Transformers, uh, set its sights on Optimus Prime next, but this time... Uh, while he had uh, he had a way of protecting himself from the swarm, he chose not to use it because his plan was to expose them to the wisdom and the light of the Matrix. And the only way for him to do that, because apparently just opening the thing wouldn't work here, uh, he decided, I'm just going to let him eat me. Which, to be fair, he could have thrown the Matrix at them. They would have eaten it. They were eating literally everything in front of them. And it's the same exact results would happen. They wrote it this way specifically to give it this like basically a horrific outcome and, you know, and like give you like some suspense that it wouldn't work. Of course it did. And then what they took, what was left of Prime's just like mostly eaten corpse and reconstructed it into conveniently enough one of his G2 toys. Um, his death this time lasted mere moments. I almost didn't include it because it was, it, it was so brief. But technically it counts, and technically we do need to include it. And now the final one on the list, we have to go to another splinter of the Marvel comics. This time it's Regeneration 1 and the final issue of what was supposed to be the continuation of the Marvel G1 continuity to reach its proper intended inclusion, though uh, the proper intended conclusion... Uh, ended up including a bunch of modern hot rods, including the current IDW hot rods. So I don't think it's really that accurate to how it would have been written back in the 80s. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just guessing here. So uh, basically, a creature born of the a dark, you know, like a dark creature born of the Matrix, is basically threatening all of Cybertron, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have to cut it off from the universe. It can't be destroyed, so it has to be cut off. They have to cut off the universe they are currently trapped in from the rest of the multiverse. And uh, Prime uh, is manipulated by the creature. Three different versions. All three of the comic versions of Optimus Prime manipulated into attacking Hot Rod. Or Rodimus Prime in this point of the story. He overcomes it long enough to give... Rodimus the advice he needs to actually like make the decision all right you know we're the only ones left in this universe uh in order to keep the dark creature from getting to the main universe where all the characters still exist he cuts it off and in a very solemn and just kind of like uneventful way Prime succumbs to his injuries afterwards and promptly passes on the rest of the story is actually pretty depressing. Um, it's a really somber and really morbid way of ending off uh, the G1 continuity. And I don't really like Regeneration 1 in general, but like I really hate how it ends because it's just depressing. Now, of everything on this list, the one I just told you is the only one that stuck. Optimus came back from literally all nine of those previous deaths. This is the only one where there was no there was no revival, there was no regeneration, nothing. And given the way the story worked in that book, not really a shock. There's no re real way to do it. But that is the list. That is ten times that G1 Optimus Prime has died. And remember... I didn't go into some of the others that I could have included. I didn't go into the uh, I didn't I didn't go into the Machinima series. It was hinted to be a continuation of the G1 cartoon. I didn't go into uh, any like uh, I, I didn't go into any kind of storylines for uh, 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 toy profiles or you know uh, pack-in comics. Uh, and technically everything in G1, technically everything in Japanese continuity is G1 at some point. So surely he's got like 20, 30 other deaths that I could have gone through. But we're going to leave it at that. So let me know. What was your favorite? What, or like at least your most memorable. Let's not say favorite time somebody died. Let's, let's not be that gross. <laughs> but 
it's a weird it's a weird trait for Optimus Prime to have. So what's the weirdest one to you? And maybe at some point we'll explore uh, 10 more and we'll find out how other Primes from the multiverse ate it only to immediately come back. Because guess what? Spoiler alert. He never stays down. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.